Now that we've laid out the story pole, we can start laying out the stringer template. I like using a template when I'm doing stringers. A lot of times when you're doing a stair, especially with PVC decking or something, you end up with your stringers on 10 inch centers or something. You could have six, eight, 10 stringers you gotta lay out. And if you use one of the stringers, a piece of inch and a half stock for your template, wow, it's kind of tough to get a straight line on every single rise and run. Whereas if you use a piece of one by, you can have really nice, clean, sharp edges. I know a lot of Finnish guys will rip some plywood and use that as templates. And I'm just using a piece of Windsor one here because this white board will really contrast with the pencil lines we'll be using. So here's my framing square. And yep, I'm gonna be using a framing square for this. And a framing square is really nothing more than a gauge block, right? but I'm not gonna use it as a gauge block, I'm just gonna use it as a pattern. I'm gonna use a calculator to locate the, the position of every single riser. But first, I have to adjust my stair gauges or whatever system I'm using. You might be wanting to put a piece of one by two or one by four across your framing square and clamp it to the square like a lot of guys do so you can just slide it along. But regardless of what you use, you have gotta lay out your framing square precisely and it's the same method. Take your framing square, and set it so it's exactly 10 inches on the blade to the very top edge of your template. And then on the tongue, set it up for your rise. This is 6 and 13 16 so I'm just going to set this right there. And be careful, because on some framing squares like this one, these increments are in tenths of an inch. Whereas over here, these are sixteenths. The rest of the whole square is sixteenths, except this one edge of the tongue. Whereas this square from Martinez Tool Company, it's in sixteenths on all edges. So look at your framing square carefully before you start relying on it. And the other difference here is I'm using this framing square for this presentation because it's so visible. You can see the numbers really clearly. The Martinez one doesn't show up on the camera so well, but boy, I sure like this. The cam locks on the on the gauges on the on the gauge locks are so cool and this is made out of titanium this will last your lifetime and the lifetime of your kids and your grandkids too it's an awesome tool so how do we start we've got our stair gauges set up i'm going to pull my little clamps off of here i'm going to take my square and i'm going to set it right here and i'm going to make a mark for my first riser this is the bottom this is our first riser coming up from the bottom of the stringer. And now I'm going to move this. And just remember, I was using the outside of the tongue to make this long line because I wanted to extend it. For the rest of these, I'm going to use the inside of the blade and the tongue. But I can't use that yet because I don't want to use a gauge block to lay these out. I want to use my calculator because if I use my calculator, I can avoid cumulative Air. I've already proven to you that if you use a gauge block to lay out your stringers and step off every single one of these locations for their next riser, you're going to end up with cumulative air. And the way to avoid it is with your calculator. Let's look at this again. This is the same game that I played with the story pole. We're going to be using the dimensions off of a right angle. You know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing? But the calculator is actually going to be able to do this with inches. And you're not going to have to say a squared, b squared. We're going to use rise and run. We already know the rise. Look, let's start from scratch. I'm going to clear the calculator, but my number's still in the memory, so I can go recall memory plus to get my total um, overall finish to finish rise. It's 47 and 7 eighths. I'm going to divide that by 7 and that's going to tell me that I've got a 6 and 13 inch rise. That's the riser. So I'll push rise and it'll enter that number in the calculator. Now I want to enter the run. That's the other leg of the right angle. So I'm going to take a 10 inch run. Now the calculator is all set up to calculate the diagonal, which is the hypotenuse. So I'll hit the diagonal button and the diagonal measurement is 12 and an eighth. And we're going to step this off using the calculator to avoid cumulative error, just like we did with the story pole. 
I'll take my speed square and I'll clamp it down here so we have something to hook my tape measure to right there and I can pull that 12 and an eighth inch measurement right here now let's get the next one I'll take the calculator and go plus equals 24 and a quarter that's the second one so I hook my tape in the same location 24 and a quarter right there and then I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to press the plus key again. If I did, it would start adding 24 and a quarter to itself. And I don't want that to. I want it to add the, diag the original diagonal to itself. So I'll just push the equals button, 36 and 3 eighths. Same thing, 36 and 3 eighths. The next one, I'll push the equals button again. And it's 48 and 7 sixteenths. 48 and 7 sixteenths right there. And then we got another one, 60 and 9 sixteenths. Right here. And one more. Push the equals button one more time. 72 and 11 sixteenths. Here we go. 72 and 11 sixteenths right there. Now I can use my framing square as a pattern to lay out both the riser and the tread. I just have to set my framing square right on this mark. I can put my pencil on it. I'm not going to split the difference. I'm not going to slide my square back and forth to try and hit this mark too. I want to maintain the same diagonal measurement all the way up my template. So I'm going to set it right there and then make my mark. And sometimes that intersection might be off, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. That is the way we're going to avoid cumulative error. We're going to keep each one of these the same by marking to the diagonal measurement right there. And this one, too. And the last one. Here. Now we've got all of the treads and risers laid out, and we can start detailing the bottom and the top of this template. Detailing the bottom is really easy. We don't even have to do any arithmetic. We don't have to visualize anything because we have a two-dimensional, full-scale drawing of this stair on the story pole. Remember, on the story pole, we've got the top of the decking. Here's the decking right here. We've got the top of the rough cut. We've got the top of the brick. And we've got the concrete. The very bottom of the story pole is the concrete that the stringers are going to sit on. So all I have to do is take the story pole and line it up with the rough cut on the tread and mark the bottom of it. Right there. Then I'll take my framing square and I'll extend that line right across here and actually I've got a piece of aluminum here that'll make this easier. You won't have this on your job site, but it makes it easier for me during a presentation to get the bottom cut on that stringer nice and long because this is what's going to sit on the concrete. And then additionally on the concrete, I like to install a 2 by pressure treated cleat. That way, I can notch the bottom of the stringers, and they'll never slip. They'll key into that cleat. The cleat can be bolted down to the concrete, and it's good forever. So to do that, I'm going to use the framing square to lay out for the cleat. I'll just slide it to three and a half inches and mark the back of it. And then I'll bring the framing square forward, and I'll flush it up with the bottom of the line and make a mark at an inch and a half, and continue that line flush 
right there. So this area right here is going to get notched out for the two by cleat. And that is all the detailing we have to do to the bottom. And notice how funny this looks. You can see that this riser is much higher than the rest of them. That's because that brick's going to come up into here. But we've accommodated the brick. That's the important thing. There won't be any riser down here at the bottom that's only four inches tall because we got two and a half inches of brick. Now let's go detail the top. Okay, now we're going to detail the top of the template and look close. This is what we're going to want to achieve. We want that stringer to come all the way back to the back of the newel post. First of all, the rim joist is five and a half inches. It's a two by six and you're not going to have that on your job. That's the set. You're going to have a two by 12 or something for a rim joist, two by eight, who knows, but it's five and a half inches and we got the three and a half plus the one and a half two by ledger or hanger, whatever you want to call it. And so we got a notch for all of that to get this notch flush to the rim joist and to get this notch here to kiss up tight against the bottom of the rim joist. And that's really important because if all of your stringers have this precise notch in it to install these so that all of your treads are exactly the same elevation and perfectly level all the way across, all you have to do is take your, tread, your stringers and lift them up until that notch kisses up against the bottom of your joist and you're good to go. So let's get our head together here. Remember, this is the last tread and this is the last riser, which is actually the rim joist. Here's your last tread, and here's your last riser, which is the rim joist. So we're going to measure down from the top of the rim joist. I'll use my square to do this. Five and a half inches. Just put my square right at that point and make a mark right there. That's where the notch begins. I can take my square and slide this across, or let me just put a line right there. That's where the notch begins. So now I'm going to slide my square back to five inches. Remember, we've got a two by ledger and a three and a half inch newel post. So I'm going to set the square at five inches and make a mark right here. And that is the back of the newel post. So I'll take my aluminum bar again so I can get us a nice straight line here. So now all I have to do is take my square and line it up on this line, and there we go. And this right here is the notch. This is where we're going to kiss up against the bottom of the rim joist, and this is going to flush out to the face of the rim joist. Here is our finished template, and you'll notice I cut every single one of these out with a circular saw, no jigsaw. I went right past the intersection on every one of these treads and risers so I could get a perfectly straight line. That's another advantage to using a template. If you're using an actual stringer as a template, you'd have to stop and switch to a jigsaw. And then you start tracing a line with a pencil from that template to the next one and wow, you get off all over the place. Here's how this fits. You kiss it up against the bottom of the rim joist you flush it out with the face of the rim joist, and every one of your treads and risers are perfect. No cumulative air.